Lord, you love us. You love us. Oh, how you love us. Oh, how you love He loves us. Say. Oh, how He loves us. thank you for this time that we have together to demonstrate our love toward you. Saturate us in your love tonight, Lord. Those that are feeling unloved and uncared for, let them know that you got them. Because she's already laid your life down for us and no greater love than this. No greater love than this. That you laid your life down for us. Undeserving. Unearned. And you didn't do it because of us. You did because you just love you. You love us through you. And we're grateful. If I had 10,000 tongues, it wouldn't be enough to tell you how much I love you, Lord. I said the angels bow before you and throw their throne at your feet. Because worthy, worthy, worthy is the Lamb. Worthy, worthy is the Lamb who was slain from the foundation of the world. To bring us into a kingdom, your kingdom, because a sinful, a sinful man could not communicate with a holy God. When well, thank you for Jesus, <laughs> thank you for Jesus. So, Father, we magnify your name tonight. Lord, we bless the angels of this house. Dr. Creflo and Pastor Taffy Dollar. It is well with them in every area of their life. We thank you, Father, that you are lifting them up even higher. I thank you for the intense anointing and teaching that's been going on in the last month or so. Have you intensified them, Lord, right before our eyes? And we can see a, a new glory upon them. And I thank you for that, Father. We receive it from them. Bless all that here, all that the world changes family, the world changes nation. In Jesus' name. Amen. Everybody said, Amen. Well, come on, give him some praise. Come on, we can do better than that. Come on, come on, come on. You may be seated, I'm getting right to it. Yesterday answer for tomorrow challenges. Amen. I started this uh, about two, three, about three weeks ago, and I am going to continue. Past tense. Everything is done in the past tense. We look at the book of Ephesians, and the first couple chapters is everything in there is past tense. Most of the things in there are past tense. That means it's already done. An action taken beforehand. An action taken beforehand to meet a future need. So past tense, expressing an action that has happened or a state that previously exists. Describing something that happened earlier, whether it was yesterday or 10 years. Amen? God planned answers before you had problems. Before you even know you're going to have a problem, he planned the answer. Adam, Adam didn't know he was lonely, but God knew one day he was going to get lonely. So he gave him Eve. Amen? Amen. Man didn't know he was going to be hungry. 
God put a garden there for him to eat on and feast on. Am I talking to anybody here tonight? Amen. Amen. Uh, let's go to um, Ephesians 2. Ephesians 2. And, and I just, let me just say this. In my, in my worship time today, I was just listening to uh, uh, Q and I have been listening to this, uh, um, I guess, for about a month now. Uh, look what the Lord has done. What you've been believing for has come to pass. See what the Lord has done. Come on, see what the Lord has done. You know, I'm I just thinking about how good God is. Uh, Ephesians 2 uh, and uh, New King James. And, you know, um, I was just thinking about how crazy I was. <laughs> you know, I mean, really, I, I, I was thinking that he have to, he have to have had his hands on me for me to get to this point. Amen. So a lot of y'all might have, not have been no fools. But, you know, I, I was just thinking about, when, when, I, don't, I don't know what made me think about that today, but I was just thinking about, see what the Lord has done. Amen. And he brought me out of all that, I, when I had my own pharmaceutical company. <laughs> and I, I, re, I remember, <laughs> I, re, I remember I was out distributing uh, my, Medication, and uh, and I was in Cleveland, Ohio, and I ain't never lived in Cleveland. I won't hurt nobody feeling, but I ain't gonna tell you what I think about Cleveland. But anyway, and this person wanted to rob my pharmaceutical company, and they draw a gun on me, and I've been in several situations like that, and God delivered me out of all of that. Because he had a future and a plan for me. Now, you might not have been in a pharma, had a pharmaceutical company, but you was into something. You was in a bed where you didn't belong. <laughs> but you were somewhere you didn't belong. And you know, now come on, everybody who had been in a situation that they shouldn't have been in, and the devil didn't make you do it either. Let me raise both of my hands. The devil didn't make you do it. You did it because you wanted to do it. Because sin is good for a season. But man, Terrell, you're miserable when you see no with it. Yay? You, it's bad, isn't it? But we have so much to be thankful for. You know, I mean, God is good. And the only thing he asks for us to believe in his goodness yeah, and love one another. Yeah. Man. Man. Yeah. Wow. Uh, and then, man, he, I got saved. And when I got saved, I, I got saved. And then he called me into the ministry. I mean, the folks in Griffin said, Lord. <laughs> There's Kenny Fuller, that's one word. Everybody said Kenny Fuller. Kenny Fuller. That's, that's one word at home, one word in Griffin. They said, Kenny Fuller, Kenny Fuller get saved? Lord, no, he can save everybody. <laughs> I'm a believer. <laughs> I, I saw Kenny change. I'm a believer. Man, God's so good. Wow. And the, and the Bible says, <laughs> I'm talking about the Bible now because I'm a living epistle of what God can bring you out of. Amen. But bad part about that, my dad's a preacher. I'm a, I'm a fourth generation preacher. So I try to do every, every, everything. I, I used to tell a joke. I said, I was so bad that I just slipped down with notes and tell them, Tell them, try this on them. It'll work. <laughs> I know it'll work. <laughs> but man, but thank God. Thank God. 
that he saves and washes away the stain of sin. He washed away the stain of sin. So you don't have no condemnation and no guilt. And nobody can put you down because you already humbled yourself before the almighty hand of the almighty God. And you are a new creature in Christ Jesus. Wow. What a mighty God we serve. What a mighty God we serve. Let me move on before I get too emotional. And you, and you he made alive who was dead in trespasses and sins. in which you once walked according to the course of this world, according to the prince of the power of the air, the, the spirit who now works in the sons of disobedience, among whom also we all once conducted ourselves in the lust of the flesh, fulfilling the desires of the flesh and of the mind and were by nature children of wrath, just as the others. But you know, um, I, I, let us say that. Here he said, when we was dead in sin, when we was dead in sin and, and living for the devil and taking orders from the devil and obeying the devil and doing everything we thought we was big, bad, and black enough to do, all white, we did it. And he still made us alive who was dead in sin. Amen. But then he said, but God. But God. Say it again. But God. Thank God for the but God. Amen. Amen. Say it again. But God. Who is rich in mercy. That's grace in action. Yes. Mercy is grace in action. Who was rich in mercy because of his great love with which he what? Loved us. He loved who? Loved us. Call your name. He loved who? Shannon. He loved who? Shannon. Amen. Who loved us? Even when we were dead in trespasses, made us alive together with Christ. Made us alive together with Christ. By grace, you have been saved. Now that save, save word is a good word there. The save word there is a past tense word, but it's a present tense word. It is, it's in the perfect tense. Because it's still saving us and it saved us. <laughs> Y'all get that? <laughs> Amen. And raised us up together and made us sit together in the heavenly places in Christ Jesus. So we was dead, obeying the devil, doing what the devil wanted us to do, all that he wanted us to do, and God decided to intervene. Not only he intervened, he said, I'm going to cause you together, he, I'm going to cause you to sit together with me in heavenly places. That's what he called me. So he causes us to sit together with him in heavenly place. <laughs> but see, we always want to participate with the world. So he got you sitting above principalities, sitting with him in the heavenly places. And here come COVID. And, and COVID, you start, he, and he said, I made, notice the word made. He made us sit together in heavenly places. Well, you know, my, I don't know where my children are at. I, I, I'm worried about my sit together. Because he's taken care of everything already. Everything is a past tense word. So why are you going to intervene when God has already taken care of it? Well, they laying off on my job. I don't know what I'm going to do. Made us sit together. Some of us he had to do it like this. Ooh. <laughs> I know he can take it. <laughs> don't, don't hit me back now. 
<laughs> Jesus wasn't like that. <laughs> I got my silly on tonight, I guess. I'm going to get fired. <laughs> but he made us sit together with him in heavenly places. We want to worry. We want to have fear. We want to have all these different things. But he said he made us sit together with him in heavenly places. Okay, Mike, thank you. <laughs> Hallelujah. Let's, let's continue. Ephesians 2, again, he made us sit together with him in heavenly places. Okay. So, okay. That in the ages to come, he might show his exceeding riches of his grace in his kindness toward us in Christ Jesus. For by grace you have been saved through faith, and that's not of yourselves. Not us, well, ain't nothing we can do to save ourselves. So we are saved by grace through faith and not of yourself. It is the gift of God. Amen. Not by works, least anyone should boast. We can't work our sins away. We can't work enough. If, if we was earning sin payment, you couldn't pay all your sin off because you can't remember all of them. <laughs> you can't remember all of them this week. <laughs> so you'll so you, you still be in debt. You, you'll be bankrupt right now. You'll just say, oh, get up. I'm just going to live for the day because I, I can't get it right. Because we would give up. But thanks be to God who had mercy upon us and had grace in action on our behalf. I think y'all ought to give the Lord a big hand clap of praise there. <laughs> Hallelujah. 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 Amen. Amen. Now, what I want to do now, read now. Ephesians 2 and I'm going uh, 10 in the Amplified. But I'm going to use part B in the Amplified, verse 10 in Ephesians 2. Listen to what it said. It said, God predestined. Why don't you say this after me? God predestined. God predestined. Planned beforehand. Planned beforehand. To take pass. To take pass. Which, he which he prepared. Ahead of time. Ahead of time. That we should walk in them. Walk in them living the good life. The good life which he prearranged. And made, and made ready for us. Wow. Listen, listen to this. Everything, remember, we talk on yesterday answers for challenges or problems tomorrow. God has already planned out everything for our life, that everything we might need. And 2 Peter, and I, I don't want to go there, but 2 Peter, 2 uh, uh, Peter, first chapter, and it says, that grace and peace be multiplied in the knowledge of him. So the more you get, the more knowledge you get of him, the more benefits that you can receive. Uh, this point right here. We read this. This is a commentary from the book of Ephesians. Ephesians is addressed to a group of believers who are beyond measure, were rich beyond measure, in Jesus Christ, yet living as beggars. See, because they, they don't have the knowledge of, and only because they are ignorant of their wealth. Paul begins by describing in chapter 1 through 3 the content of the Christian heavenly bank account. Adoption, acceptance, redemption, Forgiveness, wisdom, inheritance, the seal of the Holy Spirit, life, grace, citizenship, in short, every spiritual blessing in the heavenly places. Amen. Amen. 
every spiritual blessing in the heavenly places. And, and, and I, I looked at this as being ignorant, being ignorant of what God has prepared for us. You know, I, I think I said the last time I was here, I was talking about um, my friend uh, living in the Maryland area. And he, uh, he had this big old dog. A uh, big, big dog. I think it was an Alaskan Malamute or something. And he just, big dog. And so a, a neighbor here was walking their dog. And when he was walking their dog, he was kept barking at the big dog. So you know what the big dog was going to do? He responded. <laughs> and he responded, and, uh, and he killed the little dog. And then the, the, the owner tried to stop him, and he attacked the owner. So my friend was, uh, had a lawsuit against him. And he was in court, and he was, thought he was going to have to pay all this money. But he had insurance. It was in the property insurance, so he didn't have to come out of his pocket for anything. You know, when you're ignorant, uh, uh, not having the knowledge of, it costs you. I'm going to say that again. It costs you when you are ignorant. Because that's so much benefits. He said, the Ephesians have a heavenly bank account. They are rich. What do God call rich? They were rich, but they living as beggars because they was ignorant of the benefits that God has provided for them. Uh, just uh, about a month ago, we was blessed. Um, we know we were going to have to get another roof on our house. And, uh, and we got homeowners, like most homeowners. And my neighbor, I don't know that they were over there getting a the roof. So I think Q inquired with the neighbor saying, uh, what cost about that company? And they told her, not only they told her about the company, they said, you might have some hell damage. I said, Lord, let me have hell damage. <laughs> please, Jesus. Please, Jesus. <laughs> and really, we did have. So we got a new roof. Come on, we can do better than that. Be happy for me. Come on, be happy for us. Come on, be happy for us. Come on, come on, come on, come on. Your roof is nice. <laughs> but we was ignorant of having hell damage on our roof until we would inquire. And when we find out we had a roof put on our house, man, they did it in one day. One day. Amen? Amen. So we need to know more about what God has planned for us. I remember being at our, our local church in uh, Griffin. And we had on fourth Sunday, it was big meeting Sunday, and on fourth, on our fourth Sunday, uh, we took communion. And we had about 150, maybe 200 people. And so uh, the preacher preached, uh, we did the offering, and then we did communion. When the people came up to do, uh, give their offering, three quarters of the church left because they didn't understand, they didn't want to take communion because they know they wasn't right. But they didn't understand. That's what I'm talking about, having a lack of knowledge. Because the best thing they could have done was took, broke, took, taken that broken bread, which he broke for our bodies. Am I preaching to anybody in here? For all the sin and disease that was in our body, we broke the bread to purify our body and make it whole. And we took the blood for all mental and spiritual sickness and illness, and, and, and no covenant was cut without blood, and God cut his covenant with us through the blood of Jesus. Amen? Amen? Insurance. Insurance is a practice, a r arrangement, or shoeing against loss of damage, illness, death, 
for in return for payment. Our payment has already been made. That's why I just finished talking about communion. It, Jesus paid it at the cross. He said it is finished. It is paid in full the rest of your life. You don't have to pay a premium at all because he's already taken care of everything that you might need because he has given us everything that pertains to life and godliness. We lack no good thing. Amen. Amen. I'm still waiting. I'm still waiting to hear somebody say, I got a house that I didn't, I didn't pay for, <laughs> full of furniture. Because he said, I bless you. I give you wells that you didn't dig. I give you houses that you didn't build. Goodly houses, goodly furniture. That's what he said. Somebody said, goodly. 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 It is to ensure against damage of loss. Promise for reimbursement in case of loss. Promise of reimbursement in case of loss. Now, if man have enough sense to have insurance on the job, how much more God insurance? Because, you know, we definitely want our health care, yeah. our dental care, yeah. our maternity leave, yeah. not us, uh, <laughs> but uh, <laughs> profit sharing, <laughs> retirement, <laughs> sick leave, <laughs> annual leave, we want a 401k. Yeah. We want all those things as a benefit. Yeah. Amen. But look at the insurance policy he give, given us here in uh, Isaiah 53, uh, 4 through 6. Surely he has bore our griefs. That means he's taken them away. Yeah. He carried our sorrows. That's our mental suffering and, and, and causes of loss and disappointment. He's carried our sorrows, mental surf, suffering, loss, disappointment, and grief. He, he was wounded for our transgression. That's our sin and our broken commandment. He was bruised for our iniquity. That was our wickedness. The chastisement of our peace was upon him. That's our punishment. By his stripes, we are healed. That's our pain and suffering. Lay on him the iniquity of us all. That is instantaneous healing, instantly healing. Or whether it take progressive healing, but it's already done in our insurance policy. I say it's already in our insurance policy. And the Lord laid on him the iniquity of us all. Amen? Amen? Amen. 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 My time just about over. Amen? But you know, um, in this insurance policy, uh, our friend took us um, out for our anniversary. It was a month ago uh, today. And she, and she took us out and uh, she said, get, it ever, get whatever you want, it's on me. Are you hearing what I'm saying? It's on me. God said, it's on me. Come on, somebody. God saying, it's on me. What do you need? What do you need? It's on me. If you need deliverance, it's on me. Come on, somebody. If you need money, oh, it's on me. If you need me healed, it's on me. Am I preaching to anybody in this house? If you need peace, it's on me. If you need joy, it's on me. We been by the door for a night, but joy comes in the morning. Whatever you need, it's on me. I've already taken care of it. If you need your children saved, hey, it's on me. If you need to get them out of jail, it's on me. Whatever, if they're depressed, I'll take care of their depression and deliver them and set them free and they'll serve me all the days of their life. It's on me. 
If they need to be delivered from drugs, it's on me. Whatever, 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 whatever that you in lack of and you need, we got an insurance policy. And everything you might need that pertaineth to life and godliness, I'm telling you, it's on him. He's already gone. He took the keys of death and hell from the devil. He went down there and, and took over. Yeah. Amen. Amen. And came up. Amen. Just so you. And we are in Christ. Yeah. He raised us together in Christ yeah. Jesus. Like Mike was sitting there, he raised up above in heavenly places yeah. in him. A lot of things we tolerate. Some things we are ignorant of, some things we tolerate. We tolerate too much from the devil. Too much from the devil. Just a personal testimony. I got ready to come to preach tonight. My blood pressure was 172 over 121. I refused to stay at home because I know I had something to say tonight. Were you blessed? Were you blessed tonight? I refused to let Satan have any victory at all. Get thee behind me, Satan, for it is written. I know what the scripture says, and I'm going to exercise my gift because I know it. I don't have to do it. He's already done it. God bless y'all. Have a good night. Amen. Give it up for Bishop Fuller one more time. <clears throat> like Bishop Fuller said in uh, Ephesians 2, it's but God. And carry that mentality with you. I don't know what you may be dealing with right now, but God. Sometimes we give the devil too much power when we have God. Don't focus on the negative. Don't focus on what the doctors say. Don't focus on your financial situation. Just remember, but God, in everything that you do. For us that were so undeserving, he sent this son to pay for our sins. You think over your life, and like he said, some of us was fools. I was one of them. <laughs> I wanted to raise my hands and my feet at the same time. But to sit in heavenly places because of his grace, the sacrifice that Jesus made, it's a beautiful thing. So when we take our communion on Sundays, as Jesus said, to do it in remembrance of him, remember what we're being saved from because of that sacrifice. Amen? Amen. If you want to make Jesus your Lord and Savior today, you know, don't be on the fence. Like Pastor said, we're in the last days. You don't want to take your last breath and not be able to spend your eternity in peace and with God. And nobody knows when it's their last moment. Sometimes things just happen. And also, if you have people in your family or around you that you know are not saved, let's stand up together and get those people saved. Let's be an example to them and show them what the love of Christ is. That's our duty. Bring people into the kingdom of heaven, okay? But if that's you and you want to make Jesus your Lord and Savior today, repeat this prayer after me. Dear Heavenly Father, I come to you admitting that I'm a sinner. I'm asking for forgiveness of my sins. I accept Jesus Christ into my heart. Save me now. In Jesus' name, amen. World changers, let's give it up for those who have made that decision. It's just that easy. Keep that prayer with you wherever you go. Sometimes people will be like, no, I'm okay, that's fine. Don't, don't get so caught up in the rejection of it. You did your job, and you, you did it out of your heart. So minister, to, minister that to people, amen? If you just prayed that prayer of salvation with me today, text the keyword, I'm saved, is one word to 51555. Provide your name and email address, and we'll send you a free ebook as a gift to you today. Amen. It is offering time. It is our gift-giving time. Amen. That's good posture. I feel like we're the only church who celebrates when it's time to have offering. 
but it's because our pastors have broken that word down and, and showed us what it means. It's, it's, it's your dependence on God, no matter what it looks like. Amen. If you need to offer an envelope, please raise your hand. The ushers will provide you one. We have a couple ways for you to give. You can text World Changers plus the amount to 74483. Call 1 866 477 7683. Mail to 2500 Burdett Road, College Park, Georgia, or worldchangers.org or Creflo Dollar Ministries. Amen. Don't get caught up in what the world is saying. God provides for us. He takes care of us. Amen. Dear Heavenly Father, we just thank you right now for these seeds that are being sown, Father. We thank you that it is being sown into good ground and out of our hearts, Father. You said you would never leave us nor forsake us, and we believe in your word, Lord. You said your word would never return to you void. And we thank you for it now, and it's in Jesus' name, amen. amen. Us as you may receive the offering, and as you give your offering, you can stand up as we prepare to dismiss. That was a good sermon. That was a good sermon. Bishop is funny, man. <laughs> Bishop is funny. Mm. But God does have the answers. We weren't even born when all of these things were taking place, but we get the benefit of it. Amen. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for allowing us to dwell together in your house today. I thank you for safe travels home for everyone here. I thank you that peace enters everyone's household. I thank you that love enters everyone's household. We thank you for your grace. We thank you for allowing us to see another day. We thank you for loving us unconditionally. We thank you for creating a place for us in heaven through your son. We are forever grateful in Jesus' name. Amen. You all have a blessed night.